Artie was rather preoccupied at the moment. There were more pressing matters at hand, or lips in fact, than paying attention to the faint rumblings coming from the dilapidated space speeder's engine. His attention was fully, completely, and utterly absorbed in the delightful and somewhat surprising experience of kissing Zilara. Zilara, for her part, seemed equally engaged, her eyes half-closed as they floated somewhere between the stars and Artie's face. The speeder was parked on a small, unremarkable asteroid in the middle of nowhere, exactly the kind of nowhere you go to when you want to be, well, nowhere. No authorities, no nosy space traffic controllers, and most importantly, no awkward ex-lovers. Or so they thought. The rumble came again, this time a little more pronounced, but Artie brushed it off. It was probably just the speeder settling into the asteroid's weak gravitational field, or maybe the old girl was groaning under the weight of all the rust and cosmic dust she'd accumulated over the years. Either way, it wasn't important. Not now, not while Zylara's lips were so rumble, thud, clank, Artie's eyes snapped open. Something was definitely not right. Did you hear that? he asked, pulling back just enough to break the kiss, but not enough to leave Zilara's orbit. He was still close enough to feel the warmth of her breath, and for a moment he wished he hadn't said anything at all. Zilara raised an eyebrow, her expression half amused, half annoyed. She had that look down to an art form. Probably just some gravitational waves, she muttered, brushing a strand of silver hair behind her ear. You know, the usual cosmic nonsense. Artie wasn't so sure. Gravitational waves didn't usually come with a side of clanking metal. He glanced through the speeder's front viewport, and that's when he saw it. Or rather, him. There, parked not twenty meters in front of them, was a sleek, black ship, one of those fancy new models with way too many thrusters and an unnecessarily aggressive design. And inside the cockpit of said ship, Flailing his arms about like a malfunctioning robot was Varkor. Varkor, in case it wasn't immediately obvious, was Zilara's ex, and not just any ex, the kind of ex who had unresolved feelings, a penchant for dramatic gestures, and a deeply misguided belief that Zilara might one day come around and realize that he was, in fact, the best thing that had ever happened to her. Artie had never liked the guy. In fact, he was pretty sure no one liked Varkor, not even Varkor himself, but that didn't stop him from showing up at the worst possible moments. Like now, for instance, Artie blinked, trying to process what he was seeing. Varkor was in the cockpit, gesticulating wildly. One moment he was pointing furiously at the speeder, the next he was making what could only be described as a choking gesture, followed by a series of exaggerated kicks aimed at, well, nothing in particular. It was like watching a space opera actor perform a one-man show in a zero-gravity theatre. What the... Artie muttered, staring at the spectacle. Oh, that's just Varkor, Zilara said casually, not even bothering to look. She leaned back in her seat, stretching her arms over her head, as if the sight of her enraged ex-lover was the most natural thing in the universe. Artie gawked at her. You knew he was there? Of course I did. Zilara replied with a shrug. Nothing like a little make-out session to get him all hot-headed? Artie blinked again, this time in disbelief. And you didn't think to mention that before we started kissing? Zilara smirked. Where's the fun in that? Artie opened his mouth to respond, but no words came out. Instead, he just stared at her, feeling a mixture of awe and mild terror. Zilara had always been unpredictable, but this was a new level of nonchalance, even for her. Meanwhile, Varkor was still in the cockpit of his ship, now adding some melodramatic fist-shaking to his repertoire of angry gestures. Artie could almost hear him shouting, even though the vacuum of space rendered it impossible. He imagined it was something along the lines of, How could you? Or I'll make you pay? Or some other cliché villainous line. Artie groaned. We should probably do something about him, right? Zilara rolled her eyes. Oh, please, he's harmless, well, sort of. But I know a place which might just stop this ridiculous pursuit. It's kind of hot that Varka has put this much effort in. 
Artie rolled his eyes, as if to say, not more of this love-hate crap again. Zilara booted up the engines of the old space speeder and took off for a destination unknown. Well, for Artie, at least. Varkor, much like an angry beaver whose dam had been obliterated by careless human hikers, was now in full pursuit mode. His sleek black ship shot after the rust-bucket speeder, engines roaring like an enraged mechanical beast. The asteroid field they'd been parked in moments earlier was now nothing but a blur of rocks and stardust as the chase was on. Zilara, gripping the speeder's controls, did a series of swirling maneuvers, glanced over at Artie, who was leaning back in the co-pilot seat with a look of pale white terror. Then she checked to see if Varka was keeping up with her, and there he was, matching her moves like a figure-skating couple. Zilara, seriously? Artie said, his voice tight with panic. He's going to catch us any second now. Maybe we should, I don't know, do something? Zilara yawned. Relax, Artie. Varkor's a show-off, not always a killer. He'll want to make a scene. Probably try to impress me with something ridiculous. Artie looked incredulously at her. Impress you? He's been chasing us for hours. Exactly, Zilara said with a knowing smile, and I know exactly where he's going to follow us. Before Artie could ask what she meant, Zilara punched in a set of coordinates into the speeder's nav computer and with a flick of her wrist sent them hurtling off into hyperspace. They emerged from hyperspace moments later, the speeder shaking slightly under the strain of its ancient drive. As the stars snapped back into focus, Artie's jaw dropped. Spread out before them was an entire planet dedicated to one thing and one thing only, fun. The theme park world of Thrillaxis 7, renowned galaxy-wide for its world-class rides, mind-bending attractions, and a general disregard for safety regulations. It was a kaleidoscope of color, with towering roller coasters, neon-lit ferris wheels, and gravity-defying rides that looped and spun in the low atmosphere. Zilara grinned. Welcome to the best rides and fun this side of the Milky Way. Artie stared out the viewport, mouth agape. You brought us to a theme park while he's still chasing us? Zilara shrugged. Varkor loves this place. He'll be too busy trying to show off to actually cause any real trouble. True to her prediction, Varkor's ship flashed into view behind them, descending toward the planet's surface in a graceful arc. Artie could almost hear him cackling with glee as his ship landed in a nearby docking bay, the sleek black craft looking completely out of place among the garish, whimsical theme park structures. This is insane, Artie muttered, but Zilara had already unbuckled her seatbelt and was striding out of the speeder, her silver hair catching the neon glow of Thrillaxis Seven's flashing lights. Artie followed reluctantly, his nerves still jangling as they stepped onto the bustling promenade. Aliens of all shapes and sizes crowded the park's entrance, some with multiple arms clutching oversized cotton candy, others with tentacles wrapped around stuffed animal prizes. The air was thick with laughter and the occasional distant scream from a particularly harrowing ride. And there, cutting through the crowd like a predator zeroing in on its prey, was Varkor. His eyes locked onto Zelara, and for a brief moment Artie braced himself for the worst. But instead of launching into a tirade or starting a fight, Varkor did something unexpected. He smiled. Zelara, Varkor called, his voice dripping with theatrical charm. I knew you couldn't resist coming here. Remember the last time? You screamed so loud on the Galacto coaster that they had to shut it down for maintenance. Zilara rolled her eyes, but couldn't hide the faint smirk on her lips. Yeah, I remember. You also got stuck upside down for twenty minutes and I had to rescue you. Varka laughed, completely unfazed. Ah, but this time will be different. I've been practicing. He grabbed her hand and, before Artie could protest, whisked her toward the entrance of the nearest ride, a towering contraption of loops, spirals, and what appeared to be a section where the passengers were briefly launched into low orbit. Artie stood there, speechless, as Zilara actually laughed. A real, genuine laugh. 
He hadn't heard her laugh like that in the entire time they'd been together. They disappeared into the line, Varkor talking a mile a minute, Zilara listening with a bemused smile on her face. Artie felt like the biggest used universal cheap motel inn ever, Varkor asking Zilara, what were you doing with that human? It certainly made the chase interesting. Zilara, with a slight smirk on her face, said, well, he might have been my next lover if the awkward human charm didn't wear off and I got bored. No taste for thrills, that one. Varka laughed. You had me worried there for a moment when you were kissing him, made me want you more. Artie, overhearing this whacked-out conversation, had enough, and marched right up to the twisted alien lovers. I am glad you two are enjoying yourselves. Next time, Zilara, if you're ever near Earth again, just keep flying. I would not want anyone else to get caught up in this twisted love-hate games you play, and you, Varkor, you owe me a new apartment. Varkor mood shifted to a more serious note, but Artie pointed down to a newly acquired space gun with all the bells and whistles that he had won at one of those fair games. Artie, it turns out, was particular good at squirting a pistol into round, stretchy things. Make a move, Varkor, I dare you. Varkor, now having won back, Zilara stood down. With that, Artie turned and walked away, with Zilara yelling, Wait for me, now that's a lover I need. And Artie looked back over his shoulder, giving her the universal sign of the middle finger, Suck on that.